Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the Ask Alice Show. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, your host, Alice Badler, answers everyday questions with her unpredictable, interactive, spontaneous, and engaging style. You can easily ask your questions, share your thoughts, and join the conversation by calling into the show at Blog Talk Radio. Alice is waiting for you. From the smallest things to the deeply profound, the Ask Alice Show is the place to ask your questions and get real answers. Here's your host, Alice Battler. Well, good evening, my friends. It's such a joy to have you with me tonight, as always. I love when when you join me. And uh, before we get started, I just wanted to remind you that we are in the midst of a contest this month. We've been disclosing little tidbits of information about me on the shows this month. And uh, next week, I'm going to ask a question about one of those tidbits. And we'll give people a few days to listen in replays. And then have everyone email, PM, DM, (laughs) post, however you want to get your answers to me. And um, I'll take all the winners, put them in a hat, and somebody gets an Amazon gift card. So uh, tonight, we're doing another Dear Alice show, which I love, love, love these shows. Um, I see that we've gotten some emails again, so I'm guessing people are a bit shy about calling in, uh, which is fine. The emails are fine, but uh, don't be shy. And of course, if you have any comments about my answers or want to help out, just chat away or call right in. So let's have some fun and uh, I'll turn it over to my fabulous Andy Lyons, our executive producer. Good evening, Andy. <laughs> Hello and good evening, Alice. And I'm waving madly and blowing kisses mwah, 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 to all the listeners and to all the folks in the chat room. You who everybody. You always bring so much wonderful energy to this show. It's great. And I'm, of course, thrilled to be here with you, my Queen Alice. Ah, love having you here with me. The best. Thank you. Thank you. Now, should I, can I have a few seconds just to do a few reminders for our group of listeners and chatters? Sure. Go for it. Oh, thank you. Because I know we've got some pressing questions that beg to be answered. But before that, I just want to remind listeners, if you haven't done so already, please remember to follow Alice right here on Blog Talk Radio. That way you'll receive a reminder before Alice goes live and it comes via email. So it's wonderful. All you have to do is click on the follow button on the Ask Alice Show's homepage right here on Blog Talk Radio. Easy peasy. And I know Alice loves knowing that you're there following her. And for the international callers or anybody who wants to use Skype, it's so easy to call in using Skype instead of using your cell phone. So that's very easy. And if you find that you're experiencing any difficulties with audio or in the chat room, be sure to refresh your screen. And then one final note. For those of you who call in and you'd like to speak with Alice and ask a question or share an insight in a comment, please press the number one. So it pops up on the dashboard as a hand waving saying, I'd like to talk to Alice. Otherwise, you can sit there quietly and listen to your heart's content. Take it away, Alice. Well, you know, uh, that that just reminded me, somebody had posted a question uh, in our Facebook group today. Um, Mm -hmm. She said she enjoyed listening via the computer and being on the chat room. And, uh, you know, what would she do if she wanted to call in? So I thought maybe other people had that same question. So if you want to call in just to talk and ask a question and go back to the computer, uh, just call in the number. I think it's right there on the screen. Press yep, nine one. one. Yep, nine one four two zero five 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 seven seven. So nine one four two zero five 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 seven seven. If you're just listening and you're not in front of the screen, just thought I'd throw that in. 
my queen. No, no thank you, Andy. Um, so if you're on your computer, just remember to mute the sound while you're on the air. And then when you're done asking your question, if you want to go back to the chat room, just hang up on us and put your volume back up. Easy peasy is right. Right, Andy? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> And that's All why we right, want well, to keep it simple. We want to keep things simple. Life is complicated enough. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. We're, we're trying to help people make it a little less complicated. <laughs> if possible, and right? you help them make it more fun, Alice. Oh, thank you, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> you too. <laughs> so, um, do we? Um, you want to take? I, I saw that uh, through the through the mail. We got some some questions. I don't want to know. Yeah, we have some great questions, but we also have a caller with a pressing question. Shall I go ahead and bring them on first? I think our callers always take precedence over email, right? Absolutely. So, caller, whose number ends in 0656, welcome to the Ask Alice Show. Hi, girls. Hi. Who have we got here? If you, if... It's Colleen. Who? Colleen. Oh, Colleen. Colleen, I'm so glad yes. you called in. We were talking about you before the show started, Colleen. Oh, Lord. <laughs> we, we knew yeah, you we had a pressing sure. question, but we, our fingers were crossed that you were going to call in. Yes, in fact, I thought maybe one of these emails were from you, but yay, I'm glad you chose to call in instead. Well, well I can to try. Now, <laughs> well, what have you got one. for us? All right. This is this is it. All right. I after everything that I've been through, I've been through domestic violence. It took me years to put that all behind me. Okay. I go back out in the dating world a few years ago. Okay. All I ever get are the guys that want to sleep with me. Why? All I <laughs> use is a cute and sexy I don't use anything sexy. Nothing for rock, Nothing that even you know would lead you into a path of that. But that they look at my face and that's all they see. Well, are you so stunningly beautiful that men can't help themselves around you? <laughs> no, I was going to say. Yeah. Well, well, I don't think so. Well, I don't know what you're doing um, in, in terms of not your, your actions, uh, but in terms of, um, you know, are you going to bars? Are you doing online no. dating? Online dating. Um, you know, I've done some some online dating myself, and I find that the profile that we write is very very important. And I know a lot of people tell me they've gone to professionals, they do this, they do that, and then I've taken a look at their profile. And not that all men read the profile. I mean, we know that some men think they're they're picture books, but um, I, I this is going to sound funny, but I actually when I write my, my profile. I write it to turn all those kinds of men off. They, they, they're afraid of me. <laughs> I actually write a profile that really describes the man that I'm looking for, and uh, my bar is set very high. So it's, it's very rare that a man like that will even attempt to, to contact me. And also, before I go on a date, I have um, a conversation on the phone, and I, I have no problem making it very clear what I'm looking for. So, you know, they know that I'm not a, you know, you're going to get in bed with me first date kind of girl. So I think those are some really good things to do. Some of the things I've seen with online dating, people don't even realize that they're doing that um, men and women, they're kind of like these unspoken signs. If you do uh, texting a lot before a first date, that's never a good idea. I will not text a man before a first date ever. Do a couple of emails. If he wants to go out with me, he must call me. Uh, I will not do Skype. I will do nothing. Email, phone call, meet. So there's just these certain kinds of, of little things that I think men misunderstand. So maybe I you do. do text. Yeah. Are you doing those things? Uh, I text. Yeah. And then I also, before I go out and meet them, I do talk to them on the phone. Yeah, but still, there's something about text. I don't know what it is. That it's very strange. I don't get it, but I noticed it, which is why I stopped. 
that um, when men would text me, um, I don't know. It was just a different dynamic in place that I don't really know why. But so I, I just stopped that activity altogether. Like the, you know, a phone call, me done. And um, it's it's very rare anymore that a man, I mean, <laughs> men are afraid to even, can I kiss you goodnight? So it's a lot about that, you know, mm-hmm. having this sort of air and attitude about you that doesn't allow for that. All right. Does that I'll, I'll send you my profile, too. I, I, you, you know what? what? I'll send you my profile. Why don't and you send it? Send it to me. I'll take a look at it for you. Yeah, at, um, the, cause, I mean, if you guys remember anything about me, it's right off the hip. I don't, there ain't no time in this world for sugar. The Italian days never told me how to say anything nicely. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny, even the way you write your profile, all of these things um, can be misread. I've gotten very good at reading men's profiles so that I can tell what they're looking for. And then, um, you know, I won't engage with a man. They're, they're very good at, and even us women, we, you know, the words you say, don't come right out and say it. But there's certain words, you know. If a guy says, I'm looking for, you know, friends, he's 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 looking to sleep with someone. Right. Um, yeah. You know, I believe exactly what men say to me. If a man says, I'm looking, you know, for my last love, that's a guy that's, not going to try to sleep with you on the first date because he doesn't want a girl that's that easy, if, you know. And I'm not. Yeah. And by the way, I am not. There is no judgment passed here. There, if that's what somebody does, a lot of people end up in bed on that first date and go on to marry those men. It happens all the time. But if you're coming to me telling me you don't want that experience, you don't. I'd be happy to help you not have that experience. Right. Perfect. You know, Alice, I, I don't think you need to write, write the date. Yeah. 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 And yeah. Yeah. another show we can do is all about the words you use. So amazing the difference it makes. Yeah. Well, the well, words you use, the 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 um, ability to not be afraid to ask questions. I've had women say to me, um, "Well, if I ask that question, like I'll ask what uh, as simple as." You know, what are you looking for in your experience on whatever, this dating site? You know, what are you looking for? And see what they say. And I've had, and I come right out and, you know, I say, I'm looking, I'm looking for a serious relationship with a man I can have this grand love affair with. And I've had women say to me, well, you'll scare them away. And I go, good. <laughs> Yay. You, you know, why do you want to waste your time? I want to scare them away. I think people should be very honest about exactly what they want because then you will not waste your time. You don't need to go on dates with these men that are not what you want. And they shouldn't waste their time on you because you're not what you, you know what I mean? It's, there's no match. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, I would definitely be happy to take a look at your profile. You can um, email it to me at, at Alice. Uh, actually, email it to me at Alice at um, al- askalishow.com or you can just PM me on Facebook with it, whatever you'd like. All right. All right. Whatever makes you happy. But maybe we could tweak that a little bit um, and uh, and see, but did, did did any of that resonate with you? You think you can you know, do oh, a little? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And maybe even get a little more serious about it. Because so. then like, on, on and off of it, you know, I just... Well, it depends what's going on around here, too, with the teenage kids, you know. And I think that's probably why I always opted to do more testing was, you know, just so that he didn't, you know, really get in the middle of it because if you're on the phone or something, you know how kids are. Uh And I'm surprised he isn't downstairs. Um, Well, I also think, uh, you know, this might help other people. Uh, When when you're writing a profile, I think it's – you don't need to write – you know, there's usually a dialogue where you write about yourself, man you're looking for. You don't want to make that insanely long. That's why it's good to take a look at people's profiles. But you want to get out the essence of who you are and why this man would want you. What are you going to bring to his life? And then describe the man you want, uh, again, because you'll scare away the men that aren't right. And then... um a lot of them have like all these little check boxes. You know, what do you like to do for fun? What books do you read? I fill out everything 
because, and I really will only engage with men who also fill out everything because those are the people who are serious about looking for a relationship rather than a good time, which is what you seem to be looking for and what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. So those are, again, little clues. And for men and women out there that really are on the site just for casual fun and dating, yay, great for you. And then, you know, there's little clues that they can give so that people can find each other, that we should all find each other. It's not a guarantee for a second date, but at least you're more apt to get better first dates, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, my dear. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you're quite welcome. That was a fun question, <laughs> online dating. <laughs> I'm like the master of online dating now. Yikes. <laughs> Alex, I really well, that on and on way too many years. What, Andy? <laughs> I really see an ebook with the you know, Ask Alice rules for etiquette, online dating etiquette, any kind of dating etiquette. You are very clear what you do, what you don't do, and what works and what doesn't. Lots of authority well, it, going on there. Well, it, it's only because, you know, we, we learned <laughs> from experience. I did go online um, the first time, I don't even remember, it was so long ago when it was when it was quite new and still – if you met someone, you had to pretend you met them somewhere else. People were embarrassed. <laughs> and, of course, you learn over time because, you know, women are women and men are men. And and there's just things that over time you finally learn, oh, when a man says that, this is what he means. And, um, you know, that's when I realized the writing of my profile was so important. I get, you know, I'm, when I do online dating now, meaning – anywhere in the present as opposed to 10 years ago or even five years ago, uh, I get many less uh, people emailing me, but a, a better, I don't want to say quality of man, but people more aligned with me at least. Mm -hmm. You know, you still might go out with them and they scream at the waitress. or you know, There's always <laughs> funny stories to tell. But at least they're looking for the same kind of relationship. So, yeah, I should write a little ebook, huh? <laughs> you should. It would take you two seconds because you're like, I can see you now just pounding away in the keys. And then, and don't, and here's what you need to do, and don't forget. <laughs> anyway, yeah, even like Skyping and the texting thing all came from yeah. learning experiences. After about four or five men, um, you know, not all in a row, but after I found that, you know, when I would engage in texting with them, before, you know, even if we had a phone call before meeting with them, all four of those experience was the same. All four of those men got a little more feisty on the first date you know, than, than I was kind of looking for at the time. So I said, oh, there's something about this texting thing. You know, so I just learned. And as I kind of started doing things a little different, um, you know, I had different results. So there you there go. We go. Well. well, we have another pressing question. From a oh, caller. Are you ready? I'm ready. Oh, my gosh. So we have a caller whose last four digits are 6048. Welcome to the Ask Alice Show. Hello again, Andy and Alice. It's Michelle. How are you this oh, morning? Oh, hi, Michelle. Hello, hi, Michelle. How are you tonight? I am wonderful. Thank you. I think Michelle oh. could write a little ebook as well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you start your new job already? I did. Thank you for remembering. I'm in week two, and it is the most amazing thing. It is oh my really, God. it's really awesome. You are a shining beacon for so many. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank yeah, you. you really are, Michelle. You really, <laughs> and you've had such a, an amazing year and doing the work, you know, to get everything your little heart desire well not i mean i know you you struggle like everybody else with the kids and yeah. things and, for sure yeah, that's good. definitely good. a good lot stuff. of good going on mm -hmm. uh, so i have a question i couldn't read this calling in and asking a question oh i'm so curious um, you you have a question <laughs> i do <laughs> so okay. um my darling man is having a bit of a um crisis of self-confidence he's got multiple stresses going on from work and trying to sell his house and finances and all of this kind of stuff. And um, it sort of became known to him when I had um, just expressed to him that I was really missing 
um, the words of appreciation that he gives to me. And I would really love if I could just get some more of that from him because I was feeling a bit of a disconnect. And that sort of prompted him to think and then realize that he's he's kind of in this funky space and he's got a lot of stuff going on. So my question is, how can I best help support him without um, offering unsolicited advice to him? It's an area I struggle in to, mm-hmm. you know, not try and help him out of, you know, all very positive intentions. Um, but I know it's not necessarily received by him as helpful if he hasn't asked for it. So I sent him this little picture that I saw on the um, Facebook tonight. <laughs> If you don't mind a little profanity on your show, I'll, I'll tell you what it said. It says, Yeah, of course I can. <laughs> it, it's titled, Unfuck Yourself. And it says, Be who you were before all that stuff happened that dimmed your fucking shine. So, well, there we go. Him. And he said, That's, That's my leap button. <laughs> what, did he like it? He did like it. He did, he did, he did like, like it. it. Oh, he did, good. yes. Well, but the reason you know, I asked this, like, how do yeah. I support him without offering advice is that the things that he's struggling with right now have been um, going on and will continue to go on for some period of time. These are not easy fixes. Right. Um, but they do crop up and, you know, kind of rear their ugly heads for him from time to time, which always then kind of impacts the connection that we have. So that's my question. How do I? Do you, of, I'm curious. Do you find when he gets like this, does he uh, enjoy solitude or does he prefer his? Because I remember with you, uh, you said on the last show, the Language of Love show, that he likes quality time. So when he's going through these periods, um, does he prefer to be left alone or does he prefer quality time? So that I, I think then I can answer the question better. Yeah, he seems to be more content um, with time alone. Mm -hmm. Um, Not that we don't see each other, but there's not the same kind of urgency from him to see each other. And um, the time that we do have together tends to be much more surface level. You know, oh, what's going on with the job? What's going on with the kids? You know, whatever. There's not really, you know, meaningful connection that happens during those times. And that's where I start missing the words of affirmation because they're not coming. Yeah, which I can understand. I think that, uh, first of all, I really applaud you for understanding that men do not want to solve their problems. <laughs> uh, they do not want our unsolicited advice. Um, I don't even like, I don't even know if they like, uh, so much, you know, when we ask if they want our advice. Exactly. All of that seems to be off the table. Sometimes I do think it's okay to say, is there any way that I can support you through this time, which is anything, you know, leave you alone, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. give you a back rub. I think also beyond that, um, I would totally give him his space, let him reach out to you more than you reach out to him. And, um, you know, with sincerity, don't go over the top, you know, maybe a little text telling him something, you know, sort of guy like about him like that you like something warrior mm-hmm. about him you know the you know that makes him feel like a man you know just a mm-hmm. little again if it's over the top it feels insincere but I think men love that and um you know I I hate to say it but you have to ride out the wave and not take it personally you know he loves you and um he always comes back you know and then again this is a, a long-term thing I don't think you can push him to solve the problem quicker than he is. You can't push him to give you words of affirmation because then it sounds like you're nagging. You know all mm-hmm. of this yourself. I don't even think this is stuff you don't know yourself. But I would add that to it. The little, just the little things that make him feel like a man. He needs his confidence built up a little bit right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And as a woman, yeah, that's a good point. You can give that to him. You know, wow. At least, at least I'm this hot guy for her. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. make him feel sexy. Yeah, for sure, I can do that. Yeah, I know you yeah. can. <laughs> <laughs> and even with you know other things, you know, if he's great at what he does for a living, you know, you might. 
you know, maybe if, if you know for sure there's a particular project he's working on that's going well, uh, I would ask him, you know, how's the project going? Get, you know, excited about it, really want to hear and listen. And then you can, you know, give him praise about that. Um, you know, and again, if you're giving him little words of affirmation, uh, he, maybe he'll kind of catch back on. He knows what your love language is. But it's hard. He does. Though. It's hard when they're in that place. He does, place. and he appreciated when I asked the other day, you know, because he had said he wasn't feeling a disconnect. And, you know, what did I need from him, you know, to sort of feel that connection again? And and that's where I said I I really would just love some of those delicious words that you share with me. It just lights me up inside. And he's like, he was very appreciative of me making the request because, you know, he calls me his anchor, but I kind of keep him grounded. And he said, I can't have my anchor getting rusty. So thank you for, you know, calling calling that out. Yeah. Well, he, he you have a, a man who who allows you to say things like that, too. Uh, but I think the two of you worked a lot on that. But it, but it seems like you you know he came into this relationship with the ability to listen and hear you. And of course, mm -hmm. you're able to speak. I mean, not always. We're not all perfect people. But you know, um, you're a queen. You know, you speak with your impeccable words. Um, you know, you don't shame him. And I think that's so important in getting through any tough time. And then you are able to ask for what you want. And I'm sure he's doing his best to give that to you. He is. But, yes. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess, you know, I mean, you're doing all I the right I will do that. I will, I will do some little yeah. checks and just, you know, really make sure that he feels where I really admire and respect him because there are so many areas where I do. Yeah, and he, I think he needs that right now. He just needs to, you know, you know, feel good on some level if he's being pulled in mm -hmm. so many directions. It's a tough place to be. So mm -hmm. that's a great question. Yeah, yeah that's a great question. Well, thank you, my dear. I really appreciate yeah. your insight as always. Oh, thank you, Michelle. I always appreciate you calling in, always. <laughs> You're a mate. You are a beacon of light. That's that's great, Andy. I like that term. <laughs> oh, you guys are so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Michelle. Well, hopefully we'll hear from you again, and I'd like to, you know, just hear how he's doing. Can uh, maybe post in the Facebook group how things sure are going. Thing. When you start the little mm -hmm. little new texting thing or whatever. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Bye. Hey, Alice, well, before we go on to a, uh, say hello to our folks in the chat room, I do want to say a quick shout out to our Facebook group listeners. I think we've got a group now going. Nicole and Irma and Charles <laughs> waving madly. I mean, talk about from around the room. We've got the world. We've got Canada and the U.S. and San Francisco. I think Irma's in Texas. Um I don't know why I think that, but anyway. Um, I think I think she is. Uh, I think you're right. Yeah. Like I, I so think I think that's so cool. That but, yep. In fact, she's from Alice, Texas. So that's even better, Alice. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a little Facebook group, like sort of chattering away, and we do. So it's so wonderful. They've got, I do. They've got I a little party it. going there, and then Eli had a little comment in the in the chat room. <laughs> When you were talking about dating, he said, I met my other half online, and we spent virtually a week on the phone to each other before our first date. So the first date felt very relaxed, as we already knew quite a bit about each other. However, when I got my cell phone bill the following month, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the problem. But, you know, that that's sort of my my point, I guess, is... um. They used so. I mean, gosh, where are the days? They used uh, the proper kind of communication. Because I've said this before, you know, on it seems like in this day and age, on all levels, courting is like a lost art. And to me, the texting feels a little too casual. You know, everything's so casual instead of. Um, so I love that, Eli. 
that uh, not the cell phone bill, of course. <laughs> 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 that uh, it's great when you get comfortable with someone. And right. of, of and course, then, Eli would have another half. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, <laughs> and and also, and the Lord was really understanding how you know the caller's man was feeling, and and that's why she's not seeking a relationship right now too much stress in her life to share herself with someone so you know we're all we're all doing the work right we're all taking a dive yeah. in and you know trying to stay aware and and do what's right and i loved what michelle where she was coming from because she was asking she was taking care of having her needs met without blaming you know she was talking about how she needed and what she needed and using her i statement so that that always works great in communication. Well, it does because it's really important just because someone in a relationship is going through a hard time, the mm-hmm. other person uh, cannot just have no needs met and it be all about the other person or, you know, resentment sets in mm-hmm. and uh, that's not good. So it's, it's very good if you're able to learn to ask. Uh, and it's even a little more sensitive, right, Andy, when the person yes. is suffering a little bit. And I it love is. what Laura said. Mm-hmm. I love what Laura said. It's, that is taking care of herself and doing the work. If you know that you're not in the proper place to be a proper mate, and you're too stressed out, a lot of people go seek out relationships anyway because they don't want to be alone. And that's mm-hmm. not fair to the person. So that's right. wonderful, Laura, you know, to understand yourself that well. So let's move in to this really great question here, Alice, that came in via email. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm re- <laughs> you're scaring me the way you say it. Uh oh. <laughs> Be gentle with me. Okay. <laughs> I see you like rubbing your hands together. Okay, so it says, Dear right. Alice, I told my best friend something in strict confidence and found out that she told someone else. I have no idea how many people know. I feel so betrayed and hurt that my friend would do this to me. I haven't said anything to her yet because I don't know what to say, but I can't even talk to her right now. And she doesn't know why. Oh, that's Aww. a tough one. That's a, such a tough one. That hurt my stomach. Because no matter mm-hmm. who who makes us feel betrayed, betrayal is betrayal. And um, I, I first want to say that it's really important to validate your feelings. She feels betrayed, and she shouldn't feel bad about that. Um, that's in, very important to, to live with those feelings. And I guess if, if it was me, again, I can only give advice from where I'm coming from, I probably would um, at least tell the friend, probably not on the phone, maybe a text, I would let her know that I'm aware of what happened and that I need my space right now to process uh, my feelings and what she did, you know, and be nice, be nice, um, but ask her to please give me that time. So at least the friend is aware and we'll leave her alone and, and all of that. And then I think it's really but, important. But mm-hmm. Alice, I have a quick question. How do you, how do you start that conversation? Do you do a phone in person? I'm... No, I would at this point for the first one do it via text or email. Oh, because, okay. Because what she's saying to her is, I she, what I heard is I can't even talk to her right now, so it's not time for any kind of conversation. It's not a bad idea to let the other person know that you need her to leave you alone because you're aware of what she did and you need time to think it through and process it because she does. Right. Once you're betrayed by someone, then you have to figure out what do you want to do with that relationship? And uh, that takes a little time because you got to yeah. get comfortable with the anger and the, the sadness and all the emotions that go around with. Well, and how do you keep it from being, being confrontational too? Yeah, you don't want to get in an argument, and yeah, you got to wait until you're in a calm place. And I also think that it's important for um, this this person. Uh, I yeah, I, I'm gonna say a her. I don't, I don't, I didn't hear anything about whether we we're talking about a man or a woman, but I think it's very important for her to, you know, really 
uh, once she gets beyond, you know, takes her time to get beyond, you know, the the sadness, the the anger, the resentment, you know, whatever she's feeling around this, and she can mm-hmm. calm down a little, she needs to take a look at the relationship and see um, if, one, she loves this person enough that she can have a relationship with her and then decide what kind. Uh, it, can she speak to her and find out why this friend did this to her? Can she forgive her? Um, and then maybe she can only have a, a friendship with her where she'll never tell her anything like that again. Right. Or maybe she'll decide she can't be in her life. Uh, mm-hmm. But I think that's not an easy choice. So you really have to, and by also giving the other person warning and time, there'll be less confrontation. It won't be, an, hopefully, an argument. Right. And I've seen this actually, and in, in, unfortunately, my daughter's age and these kids in their twenties, this happens unintentionally. So we don't know mm-hmm. what the what the strict confidence is, but I've seen this with my daughter and her friends. Yeah. Where someone doesn't realize, you know, even though the, don't tell anyone. I, I don't think the person's intentions were bad, but it creates that kind of a conflict, and maybe it, it can be a month before they're friends again. And then forgiveness can set in again, depending on what the we don't know what what the, you know how deep this betrayal is. So Yay. that that would be how I would go about uh, doing things. Well, that's, that's a tough really one. A bit of, <laughs> such a tough one, and, that's, that's and we all need one. help. I mean, that brings mm-hmm. in the four agreements too. You know, I mean, once you get over totally. the feelings of betrayal, you know, what do you do? Well, because again, you know, yeah, it, it it's not personal, but it feels personal. It feels very personal when you tell someone, especially your best friend, not a passing stranger, something uh, in, you know, something that's obviously to her, she does not want the world to know. Of course, that feels personal. But as we discussed in the four agreements, if you're impeccable in your word, then whatever this friend did to her isn't personal. The friend may have been drunk. The friend may have been trying to show off. It had really nothing to do with the girl that's writing in. So that's why she needs to really think this through, decide what kind of conversation she's going to have with her, and maybe, you know, if she can forgive her. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, boy. Are you ready for the next question? Moving right along. Moving right along here. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So yeah, we get yeah we get these a lot of con- yeah a lot of the emails that come in. Of course, are relationship geared on different levels. So we have this question for you, dear Alice. I am a man in my forties. I have been seeing a woman for over a year, and I am desperately in love with her. The other day, she told me that she is unhappy with my gaining weight since we met. I was about 10 pounds overweight when we met and have gained another 35 pounds since. Now, I am embarrassed to be naked in front of her, so it is affecting our sex life. Plus, I am terrified that she will leave me. I am having a hard time functioning because of my fear. These are good questions. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I had to gulp over that one. Well, these are good questions because these are, these are things that, you know, I think we're getting a lot of relationship questions because relationships tend to be where, where we have the hardest time. And uh, these are questions that I think a lot of people struggle with. Well, the first mm-hmm. thing I want to say to this man is that um, you're beautiful and you're perfect. We're all, we're at, we're, wherever we're at now. and the fact, I mean, it sounds like the reason your sex life is being affected is because you're embarrassed, not because she doesn't want to have sex with you, which is kind of telling me that she's letting you know uh, that this is uncomfortable for her. She doesn't like it. Uh, she, you know, obviously prefers you without that 35 pounds off, but she clearly loves you. And the reason I can tell is because she told you. If she didn't love you, she would have dumped you. If it was, you know, this is clearly an important thing to her. But the fact that she told you, to me, means that she loves you. So 
I think you have kind of two choices here. You can either, without making yourself crazy, uh, lose that 35 pounds slowly. Do not go on one of these crazy diets where you lose the weight overnight and gain it back. Uh, and I think without making a big to-do about it, she'll notice that it's coming off and she'll be very appreciative and happy. Again, she has not left you yet. Um, you know, or you can accept who you are now and, um, you know, be prepared for the relationship to maybe end. Um, you know, she's made it, she's made it clear. And I do want to, you know, what this brings up for me. What does that, this bring up for you? What this brings up for me, which is really interesting. I just flew through my head. Um, you know, so often we hear people say, if somebody really loved me, they would accept me as I am, which, you know, my, a lot of people, you know, might not agree with what I gave them advice. They might say, well, if she really loved him. She would accept him as he is. And my feeling about that is that when two people meet and fall in love, yes. they fall in love with an entire package. So if anything about that package changes drastically, uh, and I'm not yes. talking about aging or getting in an accident or something, I'm talking about, you know, what if you used to do all these fabulous activities together, and then someone in the relationship says, ah, I don't want to do any of that anymore. Um, somebody gains weight. These are things that people, when going into a relationship, if they fall in love with, they're anticipating that, you know, that's the man I'm going to have. So I, I really don't think that we should expect people to love us exactly as we are if we change in a way that's not satisfactory to them. Yeah, but what I can understand 35 pounds in one year. That's pretty intense. Well, that's scary because I can see what she's saying yeah. is, is mm -hmm. if you can gain 35 pounds in one year, what's happening next year? There's a lot involved here. <laughs> Well, and what's and, really going on that, you know, um, yeah, cause we all know weight can, you know, gain can happen for many reasons. And there's a lot of time, a lot of emotional eating that goes on. So maybe feelings are getting stuck. Maybe there's more that needs to be addressed. Oh, absolutely. You know, and may, maybe, you know, maybe he just said it right here. He's desperately, he's were desperately, I heard that. And I was like, oh, you know, not I'm so in love. I'm desperately in love. I'm so afraid I can't function. You know, maybe he's got some work to do uh, in that area. And that's a good point. He might be comfort eating because he might be afraid of losing her every day of his life, having nothing to do with his weight. Yeah. You know, to be yeah. desperate. It sounds like, um, you know, maybe this man needs to, you know, not put her on such a pedestal. And I, I agree with you, Andy, that that was great advice. Take a look at the relationship a little bit more and what's going on there outside of weight gain. Yeah, because yeah, that kind of intense weight gain happening that quickly, yes, there can be health reasons, but it, it can also be some other things that are getting matched behind the eating. And she could be worried about addiction issues. Yeah, you know, there could be other things. That was such a great question, and I'm so grateful the person emailed it. That's a very vulnerable question, I think, don't you? A very vulnerable. I, I, you know, I might be able to understand why this person, you know, would want to email this rather than call in. But it's, uh, you know, very courageous to even email this. And also, what I'm very impressed with about him is that he is kind of taking ownership here by even asking instead of. He doesn't say anything in here about that he's mad at her or she should love him as he is. That just came to my mind about our society and how they might look at this. Um, he's taking total ownership. He's just, uh, it sounds like he's a little paralyzed and, and I don't know why he's not, uh, on his own thinking about losing weight. Mm -hmm. Another thing that came to me mm -hmm. when you were talking about the, the issues is perhaps when he met her, he had just lost a hundred pounds. Who knows? Right. And maybe he's on the way to gaining it back. So there's a lot here. Yeah. And oh, yeah, I never even thought about that, Alice. Yeah, That's great. I mean, who knows? We don't know. And so I, I could see her get, you know, I could see her, you know, getting a little fearful. That's a, that is a lot of weight to gain in one year. So Alice, just yeah. before I have a pressing question, I'd like to ask. But before I do that, I really think we both need to send out a YooHoo to Bart who is, has joined Irma and Nicole in the Facebook. 
Oh my like goodness. <laughs> I love that. We got like they're going oh, crazy over there. So I just I can't you wait to hide a part too. Oh, I, 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 I'm sending so much love to um, Irma and Nicole, who now started our <laughs> Facebook chat room, <laughs> and Bart, who's, I know we've got, so what have we got, phone, two chat rooms, and we'll be having a, a Twitter chat room started. <laughs> oh, no, that's, that, okay, now we're talking about Sorry, we haven't even started with them yet, and I think, uh, I know Nicole and Irma are, are on Twitter. Uh, stay in the Facebook, girls. <laughs> We can't, we can't add too much or my, more. Or my pressing question is going to be, you know, dear Alice, I'm a, I produced my, someone's show and they have me doing five different social media platforms while I produce the show. No, I won't do that. <laughs> Gee, I wonder if that's from Blowing Kisses in Massachusetts. <laughs> anyway, so Alice, my pressing question and I want to hear from folks, too, if they ever have this. Why do people throw trash out their window? Why don't they hold on to it and wait till they can put it into a trash receptacle? And other than running out and yelling at them, is there anything I can do to increase awareness that, you know, who's going to pick up after them? That's not my mother talking. Yeah, my mother head and my head talking. It's just, you know, be responsible for the planet. Don't throw the trash out the window. I don't care if it's a cigarette butt or a gum wrapper. What well, it's now there? against the law. There's, a, there's actually quite a huge fine if you get caught throwing anything out your car window, oh, including right. a gum a, wrapper Yeah, and, there's and a, a you know, butt. law that says you can't talk on your cell phone without an earbud. You know, you have, it's all hands-free, but people do it anyway. It's the same thing with the trash. What is no, that it, about? That's my it, pressing it, it, question. Well, it's very unnerving. I know sometimes I'm on the highway and you see right by like where the bridge, like where a bridge is and there's like, mm -hmm. like talk about like, it looks like somebody was camping there and, and, you know, left bags and bags of garbage. I think, um, I hate to say it, I think people are lazy. I think, uh, the people that do that, uh, I think they really don't clearly do not care about the planet. They're not thinking about any of that. I mean, why, what's, what else could it be? Um, you know, just on every level, I don't understand it either. It's so easy to keep a little trash bag in your car. So easy. There's trash receptacles everywhere. The problem with trying to say anything, if you see someone throw trash on the ground, yeah, is I believe a person that's going to throw their candy wrapper on the ground instead of holding it or putting it in their pocket is the same person that is going to not come back to you in a way that could even be safe. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I, well, they will not only not hear you, but they could, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. come up and be in your face. Mm -hmm. I mean, anybody that would do that, really, it's a certain character behavior. Right. I mean, so I, I you just, you know, I, I just let it go, and I usually pick up, <laughs> I mean, I'll pick up the wrapper and throw it out. Mm -hmm. Just say, you know, um, there's a there, there's a lot of us that do care, and more and more people are are being educated on that. Uh, hopefully, anybody listening on the show that does that without thinking, sometimes you put a piece of gum in your mouth and you're just not thinking, and you throw the wrapper on the ground. Maybe now those kinds of people will think. Right, and, and Eli, Eli told, tells the story in the chat room. He's, he was driving in the motorway, and, and the guy in front of, of him threw half a McDonald's out of his window, and it hit Eli's wind, windshield wiper, fries, and mayonnaise everywhere. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. I, uh, see, someone like that, you just wish that you could get their license plate number. Yes. That's <laughs> terrible. A hamburger. <laughs> like, I don't mean to laugh. It's really terrible. It's um, terrible. Thank you for that image, Eli. Oh my gosh. Thank you for the thank you for the the unfortunate giggles. I, I hate when when we laugh at, but sometimes you just got to laugh. Well, what I'm else? picturing the the fries and the mayonnaise squished on his uh, windshield wipe, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh. And I think too a lot a lot of times the pickup trucks, and you know I love a good pickup truck, but I think pickup truck owners tend to throw the trash in the back. Instead of in the cab, 
And of course, oh, that's it's amazing. zooming down the highway and it gets scooped up um, and off it goes to the side of the road. Anybody else see that happen? Well, oh, yeah. I guess big trash. I, yeah, I, was, I wasn't thinking in those terms. I mean, just like as I realized there are people who unconsciously, something small, they're not thinking. You know, they're not, um, you know, someone who just doesn't care. I think yeah. it, sometimes we're not thinking. Right. And, uh, you know, and, uh, I, 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 at the time I probably didn't think as much about it as I do now. Now I'm much more mm-hmm. conscious of, of that. And Irma, uh, in the Facebook chat room posted a campaign, because I guess Texas has a huge campaign on litter, and it's called Don't Mess with Texas. And the mess, That's of course, is the, is the littering. <laughs> it's great. But, but again, like you said, I mean, there's, de- yeah, there's a lot of fines, which means the state, uh, I mean, I love that part. Uh, people care a great deal. But unless those people get caught, you know, I mean, like you said, you know, unless you get pulled over, unless someone sees you, um, you don't learn your lesson when you have to pay $250 fine for throwing a gum wrapper out, out the out the window. You might be more careful after that. That's right. That's right. Well, well, thank you for answering my pressing question. (laughs) And before we move on to a very good question from Eli, I'm going to just point out that um, on Facebook, Nicole of Hux said, don't don't worry, Alice, we'll keep it to Facebook. And she's laughing. I love her. (laughs) And everybody's saying, you know, say hi to Alice and Andy from me and Nicole and Charles. Let them know we're listening. Oh, so Charles, we're doing, Charles yes, is in there Charles too. Is. Wow, hi Charles. I'm just uh, Charles is a new as a new friend, and um, it's lovely that he's become so supportive. I think uh, I think Irma sucked him in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she sucked him right in. So, uh, yeah. thank you. Um, you know Nicole and, and Irma and Charles and Bart for uh, starting up a whole new a whole new group for us. A chat room for us. <laughs> so here's a great question from our magical musician Eli, our marvelous magical musician. Dear Alice, I run a private vocal coaching practice and have a rather needy adult student who bought me a hugely expensive gift. And I felt very uncomfortable and explained as politely as I could why I couldn't accept it and did my best not to hurt the student's feelings. But now I feel like I'm being made to feel like the bad guy and that I'm ungrateful. If it was from a family member or a lifelong friend, it would be different for me. I know that students tend to regard me as their friend. But this is also a person that I wouldn't necessarily socialize with outside of the teaching environment. We're very different. And it's getting to the point where I'm inclined to stop teaching this person as the whole thing seems a little possessive slash stalkerish. Am I being too too precious about this or should I trust my instincts? I don't know if precious was the word we wanted yeah, to hear, probably but anyway. Mean that, but I- yeah. I get what he's saying. Um, well, the part about, um, again, this is the hard part about not having the person on the phone with me, is the part about uh, being made to feel, what do you say? I mean, he's being made to feel like a bad guy and that he's ungrateful. Well, and I think uh, he, he started it all off by saying needy adult students. So yeah, it I might mean, be that he's that, picking up. This yeah. is a simple answer to this, which is, yeah, I'd stop. I'd stop teaching that person. And at first sign of that person near my home, I'd get a restraining order. That person does sound a little possessive and stalkerish to me. I don't know. What do you think, Andy? <laughs> well, you know, far be it for me to turn down any expensive gift. <laughs> well, okay, we're talking to the wrong person here. <laughs> but um, I, I absolutely believe, you know, and look, I, I, I shouldn't necessarily, you know, be so hard on this person, but if there may, if, if someone makes you feel uncomfortable, you don't need them in your life, regardless mm-hmm. of whether they're, um, you know, a paying client or anything. And I've had the same sort of things happen to me. People send mm-hmm. me gifts, um, and I'm not comfortable with it. And I do let people know, you know, people have done that on Facebook or whatever. 
um, because they have my PO box for whatever reasons. And mm-hmm. I always let people know that it, um, you know, my reasons for it is because, you know, one, it makes me feel bad. So the whole purpose for them is sending the gift does, is not being served. So there's no right. point. It does. It makes me feel bad because I cannot return the favor. And and you're talking to a girl who likes gifts, <laughs> right? That's my. Uh, that's that's if you're that's a language my is above. Above. <laughs> Which might exactly be the reason why um, I'm uncomfortable receiving gifts from people who aren't close to me because it is a. So I understand exactly where he's coming from. I feel the same way, and mm-hmm. I do believe that if this person is still being clingy, he's still doing all of these things after he has tried his best, then um, he has to find a very nice way to let them go. Maybe he he's full, maybe he's taking on less students. But yeah, Eli, might be time to, to lose the clingy adult student. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. That makes me a little nervous. <laughs> well, you know, and, and, and I get to this protocol. He is a teacher. And he has to make sure that he keeps things professional. And I, I, you know, even someone like me who just loves gifts uh, and you, I still think there's a place and a time and a relationship for it. And maybe, you know, over the holidays, if they want to do a gratuitous uh, favor, uh, not favor, but a gratuitous gift, that's fine. But, um, wow. Yeah, but I think it's usually expensive. Plus, on top of the gift, we have other like, issues with well, person. Well, who's usually yeah. expensive, you know, like a, a Porsche? <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, I would a consider. Car? <laughs> well, if, if a client if a client spent, you know, let's say I had a coaching client or something, and they wanted to give me a gift, to me a nice gift would be, you know, a book. You know, something. Yeah. Like, you know, if they spent yeah. hundreds of dollars on me, I would consider that uh I would consider that, you know, a little right. out of line. That's ridiculous. And and so, as Eli adds in the in the chat room, he said, you know, I it it felt inappropriate, and I felt like I'd somehow pay for it in the future. And I'm sure you were picking up on the right vibes, Eli. Yep. And and it sounds like he is because even though he's had a talk with the person, there. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're probably in love with you, Eli. I mean, it, it happens. And, uh, then, you know, ugh, gotta, gotta let them go. I had to let a friend go because she got like a little too possessive with me. Felt like she had, yeah, yeah it felt like she had like a little thing for me and it got nuts. And it was a, a female friend and I had, I had to, I had to stop being her friend. So you can't have that. Who needs the stress? No, 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 you don't. You absolutely don't. I'm I'm all for letting, you know, but find a way to do it. You know, Eli's a yeah, smart man. And you have to listen to your intuition. You have to listen to what's being said between the lines, especially someone as evolved as Eli is. Yeah, you know, he's a very aware person. And, yeah, I'm sure he was picking up an absolutely the right vibe. And really, Eli, in my opinion, if it gets you any more comfortable, uh, more um, uncomfortable, definitely terminate the relationship. Oh, I think it sounds like it's already there. Yeah. You know, it's funny that um, I don't know. It must have been in a movie or something where um, I heard that if the if something is happening and like they, you know, like if the hair stands up on the back of your neck or your arms, you know, mm-hmm. that feeling, the word mm-hmm. for feeling, yeah. you know, go with your gut. Oh, it, that is your body's way of telling you. And Eli felt that when he got the gift, that is yeah. your body's way of telling you there is something not right here. There is no, there's really, you know, if we were all strong and, you know, we all believed in ourselves and our intuition and our gut, that's the point where we would stop whatever's going on, stop it, you know, get rid of the person, right. or stop the activity. But I, I do, I do believe that now, you know, I get that feeling and I go, oh, you know, I'm going to listen to it because <laughs> it's always been right. <laughs> right. And, and, and that's, you know, that's what we have to do. It's great advice, dear Alice. Well, thank you, dear 
dear Andy. Um, mm-hmm. But it looks like our hour, I, hours go by so fast. Mm-hmm. Um, are we ready to wrap up? Are we are our beautiful uh, two two chat rooms now? Uh, <laughs> well, two chat rooms and callers are complete. Okay, great. Um, I just have uh, I want to make an announcement and. Um, um, I just have to let you all know that something has come up in my life uh, that needs my attention right now. So next month, I'm only going to be doing one show. And I really, really apologize. Um, uh, you people are so supportive of me, and I love you so much. But, uh, you know, what is is. So what we're going to be doing is a show on February 17th. And I promise I'm going to come up with something really special. Well, I'll make sure it's a very important show. So um, if you want to make sure that you don't miss out on anything, since we are still having our show next week, don't don't forget to come next week, uh, just the, at the end of this month. Um, you know, be sure and, and join our Facebook group. We can see we only got uh, people taking over in there, uh, because I will try very hard to stay proactive in there, maybe post some topics that we can have conversations with. Um, I'd really appreciate if some of you would post topics. You know, let's keep that Facebook group alive. Um, you know, follow me here so that you'll get notifications. And, um, you know, and, you know, maybe there's something. What do they say when you when you long for something? It feels better when you get it. <laughs> so maybe you're a little long for me. So um, that's that. Um, I want to thank you all uh, for joining me tonight, um, you know, all of you listening in and those of you who shared, and of course, now our chatters in the Blog Talk Radio chat room and our new Facebook chat room. <laughs> <laughs> I do I do love you all. And I wanted to uh, send a, a special shout out to someone who uh, we uh, we seem to neglect because we has gotten so used to her being here by my side, and that is to Laura Lane. Um, Laura is out there in the chat room, keeping things going, making mine and Andy's life easier, not to mention all of the beautiful artwork that you see, any of the artwork, any of the graphic work um, Laura has done for me and continues to, you know, really be um, so incredibly important we could not have a show there's so much going on in background that nobody would ever believe i sh- i still don't believe it and <laughs> laura um now i was going to call her right my right hand man if i'm left-handed andy does that make her my left hand man laura girl well you like, know what? or goddess or woman is she my left hand goddess or my right hand mm-hmm. goddess if I'm left handed? Hint, hint, people. <laughs> Contest I next week. I love hearing that, Alice. <laughs> left handed. Uh, anyway, that was just for that. So, Laura, just a real special shout out. I, I really, really, from the bottom of my heart, thank you and love you. And I know you know that, but I, I thought you deserve um, your kudos on the air. You're very, very special to me. So with that, um, Andy, a big thank you to you as usual. You're so fabulous. Love, love, love having you on the air with me. Thank you. (laughs) Kisses. And, uh, you know, for all of us, uh, when we take ownership for our actions and our words, we will have better experiences with those around us. So let's all try that this week. And until next week. Light and love to all of you. Thank you for tuning in to another lively conversation on the Ask Alice Show. Alice loves to connect with her listeners, so please join the Ask Alice Show Facebook group where you can keep the conversation going and post questions for future shows. And be sure to stay tuned in to the show by clicking the follow button right here on Blog Talk Radio and by subscribing to the Ask Alice Show YouTube channel. If you have a high-quality product or service you'd like to advertise with the Ask Alice Show audience, please email Alice's assistant, Rachel, at info.
info at AskAliceShow.com. Until next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, keep asking those questions.